Good day everyone, I am back with another video, and this week I'm taking a crack at this Chaos Renegade with Heavy Plasma Gun. This, uh, this model came to me from a special friend, Genuine Vision, and it is from 1988. Let me throw the ad for it up here from uh, White Dwarf. So what we're looking at is figure number 022303. And that figure will be equipped with what's called a heavy plasma gun, 022311. And once we've got these painted, we'll, uh, we'll attach them. I have the backpack separated from the main body, and then the plasma gun. It's a three-part kit. This has been restored from an old paint job, and it's been restored using acetone. The backpack's purely being painted over. So I have all three parts and sub-assemblies. Here is the weapon, the backpack, and then we have the main torso itself. Now, of course, knowing me, totally going to make this a liquefactor scheme. We're going to restore him and put him into my army itself. So let's start off with a little bit of airbrushing. We're going to use our classic trilogy. We're going to use Iosin Green. We're going to move into Necrotite Green. And then finish it off with a little bit of Golden Yellow. As normal with my scheme here, I'm starting over black primer. We're going to bring this green in as mostly a saturation layer. We want to get it everywhere. I'm going to be doing the metal plates as green, and I'm going to be doing the ribbed areas as purple. Uh, some of the conduits here we're going to bring in with some steel metallics, as well as the trim. So that is the overall plan. Now on the weapon itself, we're going to add in some bluish purple weapon glow. And then on the backpack, we're actually going to make the backpack primarily purple. I'm slowly focusing the green down as we go through the layers, and this last part will bring in a little bit of a yellow, and we're going to put this on the very high points to really make the green stand out. Do this very thinly, very easily, and trying not to get too crazy with the high tone here in the yellow. Once we're done with this, we'll move on to the next part. That's looking pretty good at this point. I'm making sure that we have green everywhere and that the highlights look appropriate. This is a very comic book, unrealistic style, but that's okay. We're going to keep moving. Next, we're going to break out some Vallejo model color violet, and we're actually going to do a little bit of hand base coating here. So I'm going to hit the bolt pistol on his hip. I'm going to hit some of those purple areas built into the armor. And I'm also going to base coat the backpack and heavy plasma as well.
easy enough. We've got all of our purple base coated in. Now we're going to move on and do a little bit of detail work here. The back of the backpack is going to need a little bit more of that Iosin green. And we're going to hit the exit vents here on the backpack. No worries, we'll highlight those up again later with a little bit of that Necrotite green. And golden yellow again that we airbrushed through earlier. The same thing is also going to later appear on the backpack along the back part. That's kind of curling up and over. And then the two smaller vents down here. going to want to bring in some real definition into those ribbed areas. So we're going to bring in some Druki Violet here. This is a shade tone from Citadel and it makes for nice recess shading here and in a lot of other places too. So we're going to fill this all in and then let it dry. And while that dries we'll work on some other pieces here. We're going to actually break out some of our sunset purple. And we're going to do a little bit of hand brushing to start working on some of the purple areas here, namely the backpack and the plasma gun itself. We're going to eventually use these on the rest of the purples on the Marine's armor, but we'll focus here first. Oh, good lord, Rainer, get in frame. Now that we've airbrushed in some of our sunset purple, we'll go ahead and step it up and move on to our fulgrim pink. Now that we've got the purples and pinks all laid out, I'm going to go back in over the plasma coils and darken them back in with some matte black. This is going to set us up for a bit of a plasma coil glow effect. I'm not really very good at doing that, but I'm going to give it my best shot. We're going to be using a blue, uh, a violet to a blue effect here. Likewise, we're going to darken the tip of the plasma gun as well to set that up for a little bit of a glow. We'll go ahead and start adding the glow in. We'll be using our airbrush to add a little bit of blue violet and then we'll follow it up with some blue horror. And when we're on to the finishing steps of that, we'll use a bit of titanium white. That'll be after the airbrush step, but we'll put in a little bit into the blue horror right at the very end before we finish up with the airbrushing. Speaking to the plasma coils, you'll notice that we've added a little bit of that blue violet directly over the black. Then we'll add a little bit of the blue horror closer to the middle of the coil lengthwise. And then we'll add just a smidge of that little bit of a mix with the titanium white in there. Notice I'm not too worried about overspray. In fact, I'm forcing it a little bit here to get a little bit of overglow. Uh, that lighting coming off of that will build up with a little bit of hand technique at the end. Now let's get back to our marine. We're going to use our sunset purple here to start fading in part of the rib textures here on the various parts of his armor and we're going to build that all the way up to an emperor's children pink
it's even sped up. This part takes a little bit of time. And we're going to do the same exact thing to the eyes here. We're going to use a little bit of that sunset purple, a little bit of Emperor's Children pink, and eventually at the end, a spot of titanium white mixed into our pink. We're also going to enhance a couple of lines and recesses with a very thin down amount of that matte black that we had out before. And here I'm touching up the very top parts of these ribbed areas. I'm kind of going back and forth over them a little bit, trying to preserve as much of the recess as possible, and even bringing a little bit of darker tones, the violet and the black, into the recesses between the armor and the rib sections. Right, and the most exciting part, we gotta take care of all the metallic trim on this. We're gonna be using some of our Vallejo metal color steel. We're gonna keep it fairly dark here. Just loading up my palette, and we're gonna use this to hit all of the trim all over. knocked out all of that trim and we've added a little bit of black paint here and there to reinforce some of the recesses. We're going to move on to the next step. We're actually going to go back to our plasma gun here and we're going to hit some of the edge highlighting here. This is going to bring out the OSL as well as enhance the non-lit portions here. So on the non-lit portions, I'm gonna be using a mixture of our Sunset Purple and Emperor's Children Pink again, with just some spot highlights of Fulgrim Pink. And then on the blue sections, on the coil, I'm gonna enhance the glow here on the actual coil itself and hit the edges around the coil where the coils meet the panels of the, of the weapon itself. And we're going to use variations of blue violet, blue horror, and titanium white for specular highlights. We're going to want a nice tight highlight in the middle of those coils. Let's skip ahead. And you can see how much we've brought that up. We're also going to hit the little areas here near the tip and around the edge and really bring a lot of the blue horror and titanium white into the end of the plasma gun.
Now that we've kind of finalized up the plasma gun, we can see what it looks like compared to the marine itself. We're going to go through here and touch up little bits and pieces of what we may have missed with the metallics and then move on. The backpack is a really fun part of this mini. It's got some very soft details, but just like the rest of the mini, you can really tell that it's handcrafted. This is a very old sculpt, but it still holds up. It's got some interesting textures and themes to it. So we're just going to work using our purple, our Emperor's Children pink, etc. We're going to bring up the greens on the, uh, on the exit vents as well, and then those stripes along the top of it, as well as bringing in just a touch of metallic here. Uh, the little horns on top will bring up to a very high pink. And on those greens, we're using our traditional necrotite green and golden yellow. You can see we're bringing out some highlights, and you can see where the pinks have sort of ended up here. Um, it's taken me a little bit of time to work on the backpack, but not too much. This is a pretty fun part, and there's a lot of soft areas, so I'm trying to bring in more gradients and fades here rather than hard edges. I will pink out the horns here before we're done and mounted, but let's keep moving. Finalizing the details on the backpack, just hitting a few small bits. Now you can see we've got all three parts done. We'll lay them out here, the marine, the heavy plasma gun, and the backpack. Now we all we have to do is assemble them and create a base for it. So let's get that knocked out. Let's just skip all that boring part. Oh, fancy that, all assembled and based. We made a very simple base out of hobby bricks and glue. We used super glue to piece him together and he's been pinned to the base. This is a fun project. This was something that I've been restoring for a long time and it's kind of been sitting there and now it gets to join the rest of my liquefactors in the case ready for battle. Thanks everybody for joining me this week. See you again next week for another video. Catch me on the weekends on Twitch and until then, have fun.